name is Dr. Todd Walter. Uh, I'm an associate professor and a licensed psychologist at Duval in Buffalo, New York. Uh, as far as the, the coronavirus or COVID-19 goes, I think that our um, government and our public health officials, our, our healthcare providers are doing an outstanding job of uh, communicating information to our community uh, and to our citizens about ways to try to, to prevent our contracting it. Uh, ways to try to prevent our spreading it. Um, I know these are certainly unprecedented and unfamiliar times for all of us. Um, and I think they're doing a great job of focusing, I guess, on the, the health facet of the COVID-19 virus. I think the one thing that is a little bit needing of some time, in my opinion, is the sort of emotional or mental health facet of, of this matter. Because for probably all of us, the unfamiliarity of being in this situation puts us in a predicament where we don't really know what to expect. And for many of us, we are experiencing a lot of stress in our lives over the unfamiliar. And this unfamiliarity involves things such as having access to uh, goods and resources, concern over the security of our job, of how we're going to make ends meet financially. Of course, obviously, whether we're at risk to contract the virus. And if we do contract the virus or someone we know or care about contracts the virus, you know, um, how can we best provide support for them or help them or help ourselves in that process? What will that mean in terms of, you know, how severe or not severe is in, in many cases it is the case that uh, symptoms will be. I think, uh, you know, how this will change our lives, how we're going to, you know, find adequate care for our, our, our families and our children. I think all these are very legitimate concerns. I don't want to say to people, don't worry because there are a lot of valid concerns out there. I think the thing that people need to be mindful about though, is that we don't need to overworry. And I know that's a little easier said than done, but what I mean by that is that we have to be careful not to fall into traps of watching the news 24 seven. I think setting limits to how often we watch the news, maybe watching it in smaller doses. I think that trying to maintain normalcy in our lives in a time where there's we're in a life and world i should say where things are very unfamiliar to us right now i think trying to have some normalcy in our lives and what i mean by that is trying to have routines it's very difficult you know we have children that are now home from school we maybe are all home from work you know this is a time where you know it's it's kind of important for us to try to maintain that normalcy or structure in our lives if we can and if not, if anything maybe we need to create new uh, new routines or structure this could involve anything such as, you know, making sure you have set times, you get up in the morning, you go to bed in the evening, that you have your meals during the day, uh, set aside if you have time to work at home, um, maybe attend to things around your, 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 your home that maybe you haven't attended to, maybe because you haven't had time in the past, now you have some downtime to do that. Also maintaining exercise. I think it's very important that people maintain an important exercise regimen, stay healthy. If, 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 if their living circumstances permit them, go out for walks or, or runs or try to at least, uh, you can use things like technology or phones for apps that have uh, exercise regimens. You can follow on that. You can track how well you're doing on that. And certainly, you know, obviously we want to keep in touch with people in our community and, and, and people that we care about. It's very important, social support and, and, and keeping some contact with people, even if we're hunkering down and we're coming becoming more quarantined, is, is vital. Even if we're in our homes, we can still do this much like I am through, if you have the resources through video conferencing on your phones, on, on your tablets and devices, obviously picking up and using the phones, uh, texting people, just checking in on them. Even if you're quarantined, you know, you can contact neighbors and friends maybe to who are, who are, who are not to, to drop off goods for you as you need them or vice versa. You could do those sorts of things for them. It, it, it oftentimes makes us feel very valued when we're able to do things for other people. And so, you know, that's, you know, an opportunity for us to do that in the community is a great thing to do, especially here in Western New York, which I think has time and time again, shown itself to be a community that does care about each other. And I'm, and I'm confident we will do that again under these circumstances too. I think, you know, under the guise of quarantine, I think we're all right now at risk of experiencing challenges that none of us are accustomed to. You know, we can 
tap on to some of the you know previous examples of quarantine that has occurred in our generation. You know, some of the examples that come to mind were areas of uh, West Africa that were quarantined uh, in, in, when, in response to the Ebola virus back in 2014. The uh, SARS virus that spread in parts of China and Canada that involved uh, certain areas of that being quarantined. And, and, and from studies of, of people that experience those sorts of things, you know, you know, one of the things that was realized was that um, people that were quarantined were more at risk to experience emotional problems or emotional difficulties, ranging from, as I said, stress over things like resources and access to resources about their health, to even things like, frankly, boredom and frustration. You know, for many of us, you know, maybe who are home in the early stages of this quarantine process, you know, you know, hopefully, you know, many of us have gotten resources and stuff like that, and we're all settling down, but, you know, this is something that might take several weeks, and in the weeks to come, you know, there's the risk that people are going to start becoming bored, they're going to start becoming frustrated, they're going to want to go out and do things and, you know, be concerned about, uh, you know, access to, to resources. And when those times come, you know, it, it, it's going to be something that's going to be a legitimate concern but one we want to, to manage with some degree of moderation so it doesn't overwhelm us. And, and I think the reason for that is because one of the challenges that we have, um, and I think most people are familiar with just from their own anecdotal experiences, is, is there's a robust amount of research that shows that when um, people's immune systems become compromised and they can become compromised as a response to stress, anxiety that is of a chronic nature because our body creates and, and produces these chemicals and hormones that can become taxing on our immune system over a chronic period of time, that actually makes us more vulnerable and susceptible to viruses and to uh, bacterial infections and so forth, which only are compound the problem. So I think that's why at this time, it's very important that people not only be careful or conscientious about washing their hands and using sanitizer and social distancing and all these great recommendations that have been made, but in the same token, I think it's very important that we uh, provide or try to create some normalcy in our lives, cr trying to create routines, trying to create structure, trying to stay active, trying to stay active in terms of communicating with other people, as I've already mentioned, and, and trying to be planful of other people, uh, or not planful of other people, planning of, of, of um, you know, when we need resources and need to get to the doctors or healthcare providers and, and communicate to others if necessary, if we are quarantined and we can't go out. So I think that really highlights a lot of the, the issues that I've been concerned about as a psychologist and as a psychology professor at the college.